Hello YouTubers, this is Joe Bravo and Mo Bravo's Knife Reviews. Uh, today I have two CMFs that I'd like to showcase for you. Uh, the first one is new to me. Uh, I was just lottoed a couple weeks ago by Ian of CMF and that is the Elkin. Now I've had an Elkin before. That one was 002 prototype and uh, I liked a lot of it but it still needed a little refinement. And uh, I'm really glad I took the time to get this guy because it's probably been about six months since uh, Ian did the Elkin prototype that I have. And, uh, you know, I communicated with some of the gripes that I have. And it really, you know, surprised me that he listened and he put a lot of that into this next iteration of the knife. Um, the original knife didn't have a recurve. I'm not sure if you can catch it. But there's a little bit of a recurve there. And the uh, grind, the tip is a little bit more upswept which uh, really gives it a, almost a Persian look but uh, just kind of settles it out from being a traditional drop point style and uh, gives it some character um, on this iteration he went with hurricane holes you know we're gonna laugh when we watch this video five years from now uh, we may not remember that hurricane Ian was ripping its way through central Florida uh, and uh, because of that uh, that was the inspiration for the hurricane holes. Um, in addition to that, this has a dark Damascus pocket clip. Or, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 4 alloy dark TI pocket clip. I got the COA over here. Uh, blade steel is CTS XHP, which is, I know, a favorite of Ian. And uh, something you won't see on very many, or if any, um, CMF knives. Uh, Ian did a mosaic pin inlay in the pivot. And, uh, you know, unfortunately this camera isn't really picking it up as good. But uh, it's stunning. There ain't no doubt about that. Uh, Ian does amazing work with his inlays. And, you know, I don't need to tell you guys about how he finishes. Oh, I, you know, forget. He does this twisted tie backspacer as well. You can see in the end it's a little bit canted because it just again a little bit of refinement it is a floating spacer and uh i'm not sure you're going to be able to see it or not but this bad boy is signed by ian there it is it says cmf 09 2022 and uh yeah i'm uh i'm real happy about it um let me get the tape and get the ruler out you know it looks massive compared to the mid, mid mistress and you know, ultimately it is. They're different knives. One's a mid-mistress, the other one's full-size. And, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Ian enjoys making full-size knives. You know, this is about a seven and three-quarter knife uh, with the blade about three and a quarter, which isn't terrible. You know, it's probably about three and a half of blade steel, but the blade itself is uh, around three and a quarter. And uh, just for comparison, the... Uh, Mid mistresses are just a hair under seven inches, which again is uh, great because it's just got a little bit different style to it. Uh, this does have the ghost. Um, these both have flipper tabs. This is actually a full size flipper tab on the mid mistress. Uh, the Elkin has the ghost flipper tab. If you could see that, it's uh, basically one jimp. Yeah. I don't know what's the plural of jimping, one jimp. But uh, surprisingly, when you get the hang of it, being that there's so much room on the knife, I have a hard time failing to deploy it from the flipper. Whereas the mid-mistress, because it's a little smaller, you almost got to be a little bit particular in where you hold it to uh, get it to deploy. See what I mean? You got to kind of hold it in your palm. When you deploy it, eh, it's a little finicky, but you know, with the size of the knife, it's not unrealistic to you know think that you'll be riding the lock bar on this thing. Uh, I do want to talk about weight. The Elkin is surprisingly uh, light for the size of it. It is 4.3 ounces, and I know it sounds funny because you know that's 4.3 ounces. This mid mistress with the dark TI on it's only 3.6. Uh, but when you look at something like my uh, Brown Knives Cortex, 
And this guy is only 2.7 ounces. So, you know, you really get an understanding of uh, contrast um, between these knives. You know, you pop this one in the pocket. Sometimes you forget it's even there. And uh, when you do that and you go and you put the Elkin in your pocket, you can really remind it that you have a full substantial knife. Now, I don't have many thick Damascus knife or uh, titanium knives. Uh, so unfortunately, as far as customs, I'm out right now. I am going to use this Boker as a comparison. This is the Efros Jive. I know um, Ian's very familiar and uh, works hand in hand with Brian on a lot of collaborations. And uh, this is probably one of my favorite production knives. Uh, this is a porker as it comes in at 4.6 ounces. So if you think about the size difference between these two knives, uh, it's really the thickness of the slabs that uh, separate it plus the lightning of the hurricane holes. But it's funny how this shorter knife, uh, it weighs more than uh, the CMF. Which, you know, just speaks to the streamlinedness, I guess, or the thinner profile of the scales. Because, you know, there's no doubt about it. The uh, blade stock on the Elkin is quite thick. So, uh, there's really no reason to, uh, you know, to think that this would be the lighter knife of the two. But, uh, you know, just get into the quality and what Ian has to bring. Um, I wish the light was able to show you. Some of the complex grinds that Ian's got going on here that he's known for. You can see how it rides down and the spine's got another convex edge on it. Really makes it for a, a looker. Uh, you know, similar to the top grinds of the Midmistress. And uh, while I have the Midmistress out, I just want to showcase some of the stuff Ian did the last time I was visiting him. Uh, he took the Dama Steel and instead of making it polished like it was... He redid the etch with a deep etch, and then he blasted it, and it created this bulletproof finish, which uh, really, really, really makes it stand out. Uh, he also redid the clip. I had some uh, issues with the clip on the Elkin originally, and I found them to be, uh, you know, prevalent on the Midmistress clip. So Ian actually helped me out and uh, redid the clip, made it uh, arched. And he doesn't bend these clips. He actually takes a solid piece of, uh, I think this was Dark TI or 4 Alloy, and uh, grinds it down in order to make the arch that you see there. And uh, I don't know if you could tell, uh, this is actually standed off. So he's got two washers in there. So it's not riding directly against the frame. And uh, he actually carried that over and he's doing the same thing on the Elkin. So, uh, like I said, it was really nice to see Ian listening and, uh, you know, really taking into account my perspective on things, which, you know, really makes me even appreciate more having this knife in my collection. Um, yeah, real quality pieces. Uh, if you're not having a, if you haven't had a chance to check out Ian stuff, uh, go to his Facebook page, go to his Instagram. He does have a couple of production knives that are being released. The Mac prototype or the Mac uh, Crusade is done by uh, HMC, uh, what's his name, Jim. And uh, he's doing the machining on it and then Ian's doing the hand grinds. And then he also has a production version from Riot called the CMF Print. So um, if you haven't had a chance to check those guys out, please do. If you do have a chance to pick up a custom, I'd thoroughly recommend it. And uh, yeah, hope you guys are still enjoying the channel. I know that the videos are a little bit few and far between now, but when I get something I want to share, I really enjoy it. So you guys have a great rest of your weekend and uh, hopefully uh, have a new video for you guys soon. Thank you. Take care.